Laodicea was located about 40 miles from Philadelphia and 100 miles east of Ephesus, and it was founded by Antiochus II and named in honor of his wife Laodicea, who incidentally later poisoned him. It was located on the Lycus River and was about eight miles from Colossae to whom the book of Colossians was written and was at a crux of two major Roman roads. It was an incredibly wealthy city. It had a large banking center with large manufacturing interests. When Laodicea was destroyed by an earthquake in AD 60, they refused outside aid and rebuilt the city at their own expense. Such self-sufficiency was rare and made the city famous. They were also famous for a valuable wool found in the valleys that was soft in texture and black in color, which meant that Laodiceans almost exclusively wore black as evidence of their wealth. There was also an important school of medicine located in the temple of Karu, and connected to this school was an industry for the manufacture of a special eye medicine, cholerium, made from a famous Pyrogean stone. Laodicea was a successful and well-ordered city with proud, arrogant and self-satisfied inhabitants. They were accustomed to leisure, pleasure and entertainment as evidenced by the ruins of the amphitheaters which remain here to this day. Jesus begins his message to the church and gives them no affirmation. He tells them that they're neither hot nor cold, but they're lukewarm. This analogy would have been familiar to them. Hot water from the nearby springs here in Hierapolis was pumped down to them via aqueducts and pipes. Today you can see the remnants of these aqueducts and pipes with the mineral deposit inside them. By the time the water reached Laodicea, it was lukewarm, good for nothing. Lukewarm water, Jesus says, I will spew out of my mouth and if you remain in this state, I will vomit you out. There is nothing worse than a half-hearted Christian. If you are spiritually hot, then you are on fire for God. If you are cold, then there is at least the idea that whilst you are not walking with God, you are aware that you are not. But if you are lukewarm, you think you're doing good, but the reality is far from it. Laodicea's spiritual condition was such that they think they're rich, increased with goods and have need of nothing, but their level of self-awareness is non-existent and they don't know that they're wretched, miserable, poor, blind and naked. The counsel to Laodicea is interesting in that it either included things they thought they already had or was the opposite of what they had. They were a banking center and yet they were counseled to buy gold tried in the fire. They had an eye clinic and yet they were told to anoint their eyes with eye salve. They prided themselves on their black clothes and yet they were told to get white raiment. The gold tried in the fire is symbolic of faith in the furnace of affliction. The eye salve represents spiritual discernment and the white raiment represents the righteousness of Christ that we need to clothe ourselves in. The name Laodicea means a people judged and we take the time period for this church to be from 1844 to the second coming during the time period of the judgment and it is directly relevant to us today. The message to the Laodiceans ends with a beautiful appeal. Jesus is standing and knocking at the door of our hearts. He doesn't force his way in though. He, the person on the outside, is the one taking the initiative, pressing the door, pleading for entrance. Salvation is a personal matter and we must open our hearts to him personally. The Bible says, if any man hears his voice and opens the door, I will come in and sup with him. Not only will he sup with us, but the Bible says we can sit on his throne with him. Jesus longs for an intimate relationship with us. If he is knocking at the door of your heart, then open the door and let him come in.